what we're going to be looking at here in tangible assets and we're specifically going to be looking at a purchased patent here, a patent that was purchased by a company and how we'd be accounting for that. Now remember this is technology related here. And for example here, Corporation A purchased the patent here for $5 million on 1120X1 with an estimated useful life here of 10 years. Now during 20X2 here they experienced some R&D costs here of $450,000 which were related to the patent here. And, and also here on the beginning of the year here in 1120X2 to because of some rec recent market changes, the remaining useful life of the patent is estimated to be five years here. It was changed here from 10 years now to five years here in 20x2. So let's go and look at how our accounting treatment here for these intangible assets. Now remember we're dealing with a patent here, but uh, for uh, intangibles here you can either have uh, in this case a limited life here on this patent or an indefinite life here. Now if the patent was purchased here, which it is in this case we would be capitalizing the co purchase cost here in this on on this patent here but if it was inter internally developed or created we'd be expensing it here but we're going to be looking at the case here where it's purchased and also uh, for in the case here where we have a limited life here in this patent uh, we would have to be considering amortization here and that would be amortizing this patent over its useful life now if we had an indefinite life here uh, on this patent you would not be amortizing you would do not amortize it but in our case we're going to have a, uh, a useful life here in a patent we're going to be amortizing it and also there's impairment testing well we're not going to have any impairment of this patent in this case so we're going to ignore that here and to expand on these intangible assets. Um, technology related here, you relate uh, related to innovations or technological advances and trade secrets. So our, looking at our points here for patents, you, they're protected here for 20 years either as a product patent uh, which covers the phys phys physical product here or as a process patent which covers the process of making the products here. Point two here, if the company buys the patent it capitalizes it at the cost paid and that's the example we're going to look at here. Company buys the patent, it's going to be capitalized at the cost that was paid here. Point three, you can capitalize other costs for securing the patent, the legal cost to secure and protect the patent. We're not going to have any in those example in this example here, but those would also be capitalized, any legal costs here. And point four, you must expense as incurred any R&D or research and development costs related to the development here of this intangible asset or this patent in this case. Okay, so now let's go and look at how we'd record this patent here on our balance sheet and on our income statement. Now, regarding these uh, R&D expense, our R&D costs here. Now, remember the R&D costs here are expensed as they're incurred. You do not capitalize uh, them here for this patent. Those are strictly expense. So, looking at our R&D expense here, remember we had that four hundred and fifty thousand dollar expense here uh, uh, related to this patent. So we let's just say we credit our cash account for the $450,000 and then we go over here and on our income statement we'd uh, debit or increase our research and development expense for this patent here development here. So for four, debit that for $450,000. So the next thing we have to deal uh, with here is this amortization here, this capitalization of the patent and its amortization. Now remember here you amortize or capitalize the patent uh, that at its purchase cost here and you amortize it over its useful life here and we're going to have a change here in our useful life. So for our patent here on our balance sheet purchased here in 1120X1 we would debit it here for five million dollars. Remember that was its cost here. So we uh, we record the patent here in the balance sheet at a five million dollar cost. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to amortize this patent here. Uh, remember this is a purchase patent here and what we've how we go about doing that is this way. Uh, for 20x1, remember our capitalized amount here was $5 million on the patent, a 10-year life here. So $5 million divided by 10 years, we're going to get our amortization amount here for 20x1 here at $500,000. Simply to $5 million divided by 10 years. Okay, so our carrying value here, our book value here on, 20, on the end of the year in 20x1 is simply our capitalized amount of $5 million less the amortization expense for the period of $5 
500,000. Gives us a carrying value or book value here of $4.5 million. So now for 20x2, well, we just take that $4.5 million uh, book value here, uh, 20x1 end of the year, and we would use that as our amount here that we're going to have. We're going to have a change here in useful life of five years. So we have to recalculate our, our capitalized amount here. And remember, we have to take the four and a half million dollars here because we had the change in useful life at five years. Divided five years into the four and a half million. And we're going to get the amortization here for 20x2 of $900,000. So what we have here at the end of the year here at 20x2, 12, uh, December 20x2, the carrying value or the book value is simply the what we started out with the beginning of the year here at 4.5 million, subtract out our amortization, the expense of 900,000 for the year, and we end up with a book value here of 3.6 3 million, 6, 3 .6 million dollars or for this uh, patent here. So we've amortized it here at 20x1 through 20x2. So let's go and again look at how we record it here. So our accumulated amortization on this purses patent here, and remember the amortization here is a contra account to the patent account, the asset patent account here. This is going to reduce that patent account here. So for 20x1 here, we would have credited our amortization amount here, accumulated amortization for 500,000, and then for 20x2, we uh, since we had the, that change in life, uh, in this um, change in life here in this patent, or its useful life here, we come up with this new amortization amount here of $900,000. So credit our am accumulated amortization account for those amounts here, and then we'd be recognizing it as patent expense here uh, for the patent amortization here on our income statement. So patent expense would be, on our income statement, would be debited here for 20x1, the $500,000 amount debit here, and for 20x2, we would debit here for $900,000. So that takes care of our amortization here on this patent. So the point that we want to make here, uh, going back to our R&D costs, remember here, they don't get capitalized. What they do is they get expensed out here on our income statement as research and development uh, expenses here. And remember, that was uh, connected to the patent here. So we didn't capitalize them. We didn't put them in our patent account. And then when you're dealing with these purchase patents here, remember you have to capitalize them at the purchase price or the cost that you paid for the patent here. So just remember that uh, when you buy the patent or you purchase, uh, you don't develop it internally or you buy it from an, uh, another source here, then you would capitalize it at the cost. And then you just simply amortize it down here. And we've had a change here in our amortization expense only because we had a change here in the use in the useful life. So when you have the change in the useful life, remember you have to recalculate your carrying value here on your amortization at that period here and then the uh, de because uh, with the change in useful life and then based on your carrying value that you have here then you can go out and divide your, your useful life into that new carrying value you have and come up with your new amortization expense all right so that takes care of a purchase patent here and um, that's how you would account for it now just remember you got your r d costs here are separated from your uh, capitalized costs that are amortized.